testing is essentially where you try and break your program to make sure that all of your code produces the outputs you expect and all of your validation and authentication routines work. It involves you inputting data into your program to see if you get an expected output. There are two types of testing that we perform. Iterative testing, where you test modules of the program as you go along, testing code as soon as it is written. This means that you find and fix errors as you go, but it can take a long time to get to a finished program. And final testing, where you test the program when it is finished. This means that you get to the finished product, but if there are any issues, you need to go back and fix them. The two main types of error we are looking for are syntax errors and logic errors. Syntax means the rules of a language. All programming languages have their own syntax. For example, in Python, an if statement needs to end with a colon. Syntax errors are where your code doesn't correctly follow the rules of the programming language and will usually cause the code to not compile. We learned about a range of common syntax errors in the lesson Analyzing Algorithms earlier in this course. Identifying syntax errors is generally much easier than finding logic errors. The software that you use to write programs are called Integrated Development Environments, and they usually have built-in syntax checkers. For example, if you did miss the colon at the end of an if statement, the IDE will usually show you either through an error alert when you run your code or often by drawing a small line showing the missing colon while you're still writing the code. A syntax error might not be highlighted in this way, and so it's important to be able to read the error messages given when you run your code carefully to ensure that you can identify the syntax errors and correct them. Look at the following Python code. If we run this code and enter a username and password, we will receive a syntax error saying this. You will notice that on the second line of this error message, it says that the error is on line three. It also states that the error is a name error because username is not defined. On line three, we do use the variable named username to check if it's equal to ninja. By looking through our code, we can see that we declared the variable on line one. But wait, on line one, we declare a variable named username all in lower case. But on line three, we write username with a capital U. A key syntax rule of programming languages is that names are case sensitive. If we change our code so that line three says username in all lowercase, then our code will run just fine. A logic error is where your program runs but does not give you the answer you expect. Common logic errors occur when you make simple mistakes in a program. For example, when calculating the VAT on a product, the correct Python code would be this. However, the following code would give two logical errors. Here, we have accidentally set VAT to the wrong value and we are adding instead of multiplying. So this program would calculate VAT to be 100 pounds and 30 pence, which is wrong. The program has worked, but given the wrong answer. Logical errors can be very hard to detect in comparison to syntax errors. One of the best ways would be to dry run our code using a trace table, much like we learnt in the lesson Analyzing Algorithms. When testing a program, there are three types of test data you need to use. Normal data. This is data that is expected to work. Boundary data. This is data that tests the upper or lower limits of your program, such as the end of an array or the maximum value that should be accepted. We need to check both sides of the boundary. Erroneous data. This is data that should be rejected by the program. Let's look at a simple Python coding example, slightly modified from one we have used previously. This program should Take a whole number input between 1 and 10 from the user, add 10 to the number, and print out the result to the console. In order to test our program, we will usually have a test plan which will follow a similar layout to this. Let's explain each of our test data examples. 4. This is normal because it is well within the accepted limits of what should be inputted by the user. 1 and 10. These are boundary 
because they are the max and min values that should be accepted by the program. 0 and 11. These are boundary and erroneous because they are just below the min and above the max values that should be accepted by the program. 2.5 and 10. These are erroneous as we've asked for a whole number, an integer, but one of these is a float and the other is a string. We can of course see that our program has failed at handling four of our tests correctly. At this point we need to refine our program to make it more robust and free of errors. Let's consider the first issue with our program. It is accepting data outside the acceptable boundaries. To improve our algorithm, we need to ensure that it will not allow the user to input a number smaller than 1 or larger than 10. You might remember that this is called a range check. We can implement a range check as follows. That resolves our program accepting numbers outside of the boundaries of what is acceptable. But what about the data of the wrong type? Currently our program is trying to pass the input into an integer. And this is causing the program to crash when we input a string or float. We need to ensure that the user can only input an integer. You might remember this is a type check. We can implement a type check using the try accept code we learnt in our data validation lesson. Brilliant! Our program now successfully passes all of our test cases. We have successfully refined our program to leave it error free and more robust to user input. It's important that you always verify this by running through your test plan again. So, Testing is where you select data to make sure that your program works as expected. Iterative testing is where you test your program as you go. Final testing is where you test your program at the end. Syntax errors are when you make mistakes in the programming language. This could be spelling errors or missing keywords or not using colons, brackets or indents. Syntax errors usually mean the program will fail to compile. Syntax errors are very easy to spot as the IDE will usually help you to spot them. Logic errors are where the program compiles but then does not behave as expected. Logic errors are very hard to spot, with dry running using a trace table being one of the more effective measures for finding them. Test data can be normal, boundary or erroneous. We can use a test plan to check if our system handles these different types of data effectively. We can then refine the program to be more robust and error free.